Thank you all for coming uh, today. We are part of Health Workers for Palestine and we stand here every Friday uh, and asking for the world to stop and uh, here to support our uh, health worker colleagues in uh, Gaza. Uh, and we have uh, two speeches today uh, and a few uh, videos to uh, show you. Uh, so, uh, I'll start with my speech. Uh, so, life, health, and dignity, these three things that we as health professionals aim to preserve at all costs. Three things that are endangered by the war in Gaza. In Gaza, teens of Tens of thousands of Palestinians have been killed by Israel. Uh, so by now, I think it's more than 20,000 people. More than one-third of them are children. More than two-thirds of them are children and women. They have been killed by bombs in residential areas, hospitals, schools, and places of worship. Palestinians' lives, lives are in danger until there is a cease fire. Palestinians are not only threatened by aerial bombardment, but by snipers and tanks that target anyone in their path. Their lives are in danger because it has been three months since the blockage that was keeping Gazan's children just above the malnutrition threshold for 16 years was severely 
tightened. For three months, water and electricity have been cut off and food trucks have been blocked at the border. The lives of Gazans are in danger as almost two million people have been forced to move south, fleeing pubs and land, sorry, and land invasion. They live in vicious sanitary condition with one toilet for every 700 people. They are in danger because the bodies of the Palestinians killed by snipers can't be recovered and their bodies are decomposing in the streets. Lives are in danger because the sewers are overflowing. All that is exposing people to many life-threatening infectious diseases. They are in danger because there is not enough medicine, electricity, water, and medical supplies to treat the sick or probably care for the 180 Palestinian women who give birth every day. Lives are in danger because, just like Hosanna Abu Safiya, who was a medical student, Fatma Abu Talou, who was a nurse, Sulaiman Sarabi, who was a dentist, Rana Shalabi, who was a nurse, Omar Irwana, who was a doctor and a professor, Maisara al Rayas, who was a doctor, Mahdi Abu Shalouf, who was a nurse, Ahmed Al Masri, who was a physiotherapist, Dua Jadullah, who was a laboratory technician, Biat Salim, who was a paramedic, like them, more than 370 health professionals have been targeted and killed by the Israeli army. Medical personnel who are responsible for the care of the sick and injured, as well as hospitals, are being the military attacked. After all that has happened, how can we talk about the genocide? How can we talk about the genocide when more than 50% of the homes in Gaza have been raised to the ground and left in ruins by the Israeli army? How can we talk about the genocide when the Palestinians? Even those who have survived have no assurance of safety or security. When the threat of bombs or a sniper is, is uh, paramount. How can we talk about the dignity when Palestinians can't mourn their loved ones who lie in the streets or under the ruins? How can we talk about dignity when the incident noise of the planes and, planes and drones are <coughs> ever present? In the face of all this horror, with the violation of what our profession aims to preserve, we are the health care workers to stand alongside Gazans and to stand in solidarity with our Palestinian colleagues. We caregivers unite our voices by sharing their speech from the four concerns of the world, not just in Paris, but also in Hull, in uh, every city in UK today, we denounce the war crimes taking place in Gaza in the strongest possible terms. We demand sanctions against Israel so that this massacre may stop. We demand a ceasefire and the provision of humanitarian and medical aid to Gaza as soon as possible. Uh, thank you. Few studies from uh, my colleagues in Gaza, doctors who are now in hospital. So most of the hospitals in North Gaza now are destroyed and uh, there is no health care provided there at all for them. So any even sick uh, patients, any patients there won't uh, have an access to any health uh, services. In the south of Gaza, where Israeli says that it's a safe area for the Gazans people, the hospitals are still targeted uh, till now, and uh, even there is a kind of service there, but not really uh, helping people there who are even to find the friends. They are saying they are spending five or six hours every day just to find some food, some bread to eat, and another five or six hours to find some water, which is not necessarily clean to drink, and even. If you try to find any medicine or anything in the south, it is a very hard job to these So, today and every day, we will stand till this war uh, comes to a stop. And uh, we should all say, ceasefire now.
Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Um, we have a baby who would like to give us a short speech. Hi. Sorry, I'm not very good at public speaking. Um, so, seven years ago, um, in paediatric A&E, I saw a child die for the first time. Seven years later, I can still hear the unbearable agony in his parents' cries. <coughs> On my phone screen, over 3,000 miles away in Gaza, I watched a mother shake the lifeless body of her toddler, begging for her to wake up. Her scream was the same scream, her pain the same unbearable agony. We all love our children the same, regardless of race, religion or where we live. And if the worst imaginable thing happens to us as parents, we all scream for them the same too. And when I think about <coughs> that child who died seven years ago and the profound impact it had on me, I think about the doctors and nurses in Gaza trying to save the lives of children without equipment, anaesthetic or pain relief. And I wonder if they themselves survived this, how they will ever recover from the trauma of what they have seen. Thank you very much. Uh, can I ask Dr. Hilary Clinton? Yeah, give us. Dr. Mohammed Dabur, 
Dr. Tamir Al Khayat, Dr. Mahmoud Al Khayat, Dr. Razan Al Rukhawi, Dr. Sareen Al Akar, Dr. Saeed Zarabi, Dr. Muhammad Al Samari, Dr. Rafat Al Fool, Dr. Amal Al Makadma, Dr. Ibtihad Al Asal, Dr. Dua Awad, Dr. Bua Nabahin, Dr. Yusuf Jadola, Dr. Inas Yusuf, Dr. Isra Al Ashkar, Dr. Abdullah Ashur, Dr. Hamad Al Adib, Dr. Munta Abu Saria, Dr. Dua Shabut, Dr. Bara Abu Ilaish, Dr. Abdullah Al Hadu, Dr. Muhammad Asu Afana, Dr. Muhammad Rafat Mekki, Dr. Maisara Azmi Al Rais, Dr. Moe Al Shuratha, Dr. Abdullah Al Badri, Dr. Hashim Al Badri, Dr. Umar Ziara, Dr. Ahmed Hassan, Dr. Kasey Mahdi, Dr. Raid Mahdi, Dr. Muhammad Edwan, Dr. Hamad Alu, Dr. Khalid Al Nahar, Dr. Mustafa Al Abasi, Dr. Madhat Mohaisa, Dr. Rafat Hubad, Dr. Ayman Salaha, Dr. Zayn Al Dari, Dr. Ahmad Al Sahar, Dr. Mahmoud Abu Nijida, dentists include Dr. Ahmed Al Kuraini, Dr. Dada Mahdi, Dr. Ibrahim Al Dali, Dr. Bilal Nubad, Dr. Marwa Swati. Dr. Arij E, Dr. Taufik Al Farra, Dr. Abdullah Baghdadi, Dr. Jameel Tarazi, Dr. Maisoon Al Dr. Mona Dogmosh, Dr. Noha Dogmosh, Dr. Ramon Afana, Dr. Muhammad Afana, Dr. Anis Becky, Dr. Tasneem Abdul Nabi, Dr. Arayn Al Rais, Dr. Amin Al Bahtiti, Dr. Samira Mahdi, Dr. Saud Al Nakhal. Medical and dental students also include Bissam Halasa, Shayma Saydam. Abdul Rahman Abu Shamala, Noor Al Ashkar, Yasin Al Akras, Usama Abu Sufiya, Duha Dukmosh, Hani Al Shanat, Abdullah Abu Jayab, Zainab Azam, Muhammad Abu Jidan, Rahtar Abdul Nabi, Al Basri, Yusuf Al Rajani, Ahmad Jazi, Roa Hamad Haniya, Ina Al Hur, Afnan Rakwan, Naina Ubay, Ahmed Mahdi, Umar Awad Allah, Mohdaz Sadi. Medical scientists also include Professor Shala Al Din Zanon, Professor Ahmed Al Dadu, Professor Abi Mushtaha, Professor Mohammed Shabir. The list of nurses include Mohammed Nubad, Mohammed Al Aziza, Ahmed Mushtaha. 
Muhammad al Hussein, Occupational Physiotherapist in Kuwait, Ahmed al Masri, Ahmed Sabu Abu, Ahmed Sabu Abu Hadi, Shayma Smay, Maya al Wahidi, Ahmed Aswad, Shahmazan al Akhas, Isa Isa Muhammad Darwish Tadis of Francis Ahmed Al Sharjawi Aziz Al Farah Afnan Al Astan Sharif Abu Jazar Iman Abu Al Jalil Safa Hasuna Ibrahim Muhammad Ali, Nasa Ali, Sri Al Damar, Sadi Al Aini, Muhammad Al Shanan, Mina Al Muadine, Lou Imei, Hani Al Basuni, Amira Dahlan. Every Friday we were uh, adding more names to this list and now it includes more than 360 healthcare workers and that reflects what's happening there with more than 2,000, uh, 20,000 people killed there including more than 100 journalists, uh, 
those there, those them are women and children, as we said. And we hope that next Friday we don't have to add any new names to this list. Hopefully, uh, we have uh, Ahmed here who would like to give us a speech as well. He's a doctor from Gaza, so please come ahead. Hello everyone. Hello. Thank you very much for your support and coming today. We all witnessed the historic moments where for the first time Israel stood before the court. Something that should have happened many times for issues like the forceful displacement, repeated genocide and mass killing on the Palestinian people. They say, when you want to judge a person, you should look at their long history. Then you can understand their ideology. Genocide is not something unfamiliar to the Palestinian people. It has repeated throughout history. But today, Palestinians can smile and their eyes widen with optimism, believing that finally there is international will to confront this enemy. For their crimes. Let me recount a story among hundreds of similar tragic stories over the past 75 years since Nakba. I will share with you what an Israeli historian called Yaakov Gilbert witnessed when the Israeli army invaded a city called City of Lod. He said, and I quote, the third Italian commander Moshe Kilman. He ordered the troops to shoot at any clear targets. This has happened 75 years. Now the, uh, uh, the Israel, Israel today has claimed that they are doing it for self-defense. And they are not really deliberately targeting civilians. This has happened 75 and history repeats itself. So, Sorry, yes. Officer Kilman ordered the troops to shoot at any clear targets, including anyone seen on the street. He said he had no choices. There was no chance of immediate reinforcement. Israeli soldiers threw grenades into houses. They suspected the snipers were hiding in. Again, human shields and all this ridiculous things. Residents ran out of their homes at that day in panic and were shot. Goheen is an IDF intelligence officer said around 250 people killed between 11.30 and 2 o'clock, three hours. The Zionist ideology is based on racist ideology that depicts Palestinians as animals and worthless or inferior individuals in order to justify the crimes they do against them. What happened and continue to happen, sadly, will keep occurring in the future unless a strong stand is taken. International solidarity movement that ultimately aim to expose and sanction Israel to press them to give equal rights to all people who are living in historical Palestine and the right, and the right to return to all who have been forcefully place including my family and jihad family and many other families thank you very much thank you. Thank you. we would like to invite anyone who would like to say any word or speech so if anyone wants to come ahead and say anything he is more than welcome Uh, 
the end, I would like you all uh, to thank you all for coming today. And uh, we are here every Friday till this war uh, stops. And uh, we all hope that this come to uh, an end soon. Uh, thank you again uh, for coming. And uh, we'll see you next Friday. <laughs> thank you. Can, can we stand uh, all together here to have a picture for uh, uh, healthcare workers for Palestine, please? Thank you. في واحد عطاني هاي الكاميرا ما بعرف شو هي بصراحة حكى لي امسكها بس ما بعرف اذا انت عليك علاقة فيها ما بي هو لا هو هذا العقلي يمكن هو اللي بيصور شاي At the end, before we leave, we will just say, deep from our hearts, cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Thanks, thank you all.